prayers and support, but also uh, for the financial means to allow me to go. I know the church uh, greatly supports these missions and uh, really helped me be able to go. Uh, my story is a little different, I think, than the other ones uh, that uh, have been presented. Uh, there's, uh, that's just a random picture I think John put up. Uh, my, the of, first, Haiti. of Haiti. Of Haiti. Yeah, it's of Haiti. Not, yeah. not just a random picture. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't have a picture of the person uh, that I uh, was going to talk about. Just a little backstory to, to, to kind of put uh, this into perspective. When I uh, first decided to go to Haiti, my wife and I prayed about it and uh, we both wanted to go. We didn't have the means to both go, and we decided maybe maybe I should go. I'd never experienced anything like this, so I really had no idea what to expect from Haiti. Uh, I, I went with just a real open mind and heart, but really what I thought is I just do a lot of work. You know, I'm, it's what I do. I build things or fix things, so that's what I went to do. Um, didn't expect to be touched the same way, or I don't know. I heard a lot of stories, but I thought I'd just work. Uh, that's what we did the first two days. So I thought, okay, this is what I'm here to do, just work. So uh, building up to that, that's kind of what I uh, was going on the path of. Uh, second day, uh, this is where this ended up being, but it started early, 4 a.m. Uh, we walked three miles up a mountain uh, to what John John calls in Creole, I don't remember the word, but it's called Smelly Cave. So we <laughs> crawled to Smelly Cave for three miles in the heat. Uh, Sean Guthmiller fell into a puddle of water. Uh, we walked three miles back. We were all really exhausted, and I, I, I just was spent for the day. I didn't really have much left in me, but uh, Christy said, let's package up some goods for some widows and widowers in the area. And I said, sure, sounds fun, just something to work on. And after we did that, we kind of broke off into little groups. Uh, John John led the group I was with. Uh, there's also a group from Pella with us and a couple people. We went out to a couple of the, the homes out around John John's area. Uh, these homes are probably not what you expect a home to be. They're about 8 by 10 to 10 by 15. 10 to 15 people probably live in them. They're made out of stucco or mud, uh, tin roofed. Uh, I didn't know what to expect from the people as we delivered these packages. I, I guess I, 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 I don't know, I thought I was expecting... Uh, people would be jumping around, or I, I didn't know. But I, I think I was starting to get disappointed that I wasn't seeing more in return. And I, I come to realize I, I think I was letting myself down, but for the reason of the last person we went to. Uh, so this person that we go to at the end of the, of the widows that John John had packages for, uh, he said, well, we're going to walk across the street to, to this gal's house. Uh, this one work, looked far worse than the others. It was mainly just sticks and rocks with a little tent on top. Um, so he said, she's, she's a proud woman. She doesn't like a lot of help. Uh, she's uh, come around a little bit. She's pretty accepting of us, but uh, uh, she's not a Christian. She's never uh, accepted the Lord, but sh she likes us to stop by. So we walked up there, our group, and John John talked to her in Creole, and he said, well, we're going to, she, she said, we can pray for her house and herself. So we did, and he asked us to put our hands around her house. So again, I was like, okay. What's next? And as we put our hands on the house, this first time I really felt the presence of something uh, overwhelm me. And uh, as Denny Brand, uh, who's Shelley's father, said throughout our trip, he said, you know, look for the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's not just uh, God doing the work, but just really feel the Spirit at work. And I, I really understood that as he told me later, because I remember that moment where I felt the Holy Spirit on her house and uh, after, after John John was done praying, I could see it on her, too. She, she didn't have a lot of emotion, but you could see a, a smile and appreciation for what we were doing. Um, I, la I later learned her name. Her name was Clome. I uh, didn't know much more about her, but ever since then, I've uh, said a prayer for Clome every day. Uh, for her home, uh, for her spirit, that uh, that, that moment I, I will, will build and... Uh, that John John's ministry will continue with her, and uh, I hope to see her on that throne with these other people. So. Jared, I want to thank you for sharing that piece of the story. He asked me this week, is it okay if I share about someone who's not yet a Christian? I said, that fits very well with where the message is going today as well. But as, as, uh, as uh, we're hearing the stories this morning, one thing I want to share with you is something that happened early in the summer. Rick Clark is our chair chairperson of our missions team, and, uh, you know, Rick... Rick and I are trying to decide, okay, we're trying to decide how much people have to 
contribute towards these trips? How are we going to raise resources? And how can we get people to go? And people weren't sure. And not just Jared, but everyone, no one really knew how God was going to provide. And, but we had to buy these plane tickets and get their names on them. And so we went ahead and did it. Rick said, let's do it and see the Lord will provide. And after we took that step of faith, um, God responded by a few people, just two people in particular, walked into my office and said, we want to bless and help in some way, not knowing what the need was. And those needs help these teams be able to go this summer. And uh, that's just a great testimony of God's faithfulness. I want to say thank you for those contributions and those statements and the steps of faith that these people took to go. And just to let you know as the Lord leads you to be a part of these things. But let's pray for the people of Haiti this morning as well. Father, uh, we thank you so much for John, John, and Christy, for Jared and Stacy, for Many Hands for Haiti, United Christians International. And Lord, uh, it is probably 10, 15, 20 degrees hotter in that place today than here. And yet every day, they wake up in some of the most poorest people in the Western Hemisphere. And they're blessing them with the love of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for this young girl who gave her leg to save a child. We pray for Clome, who doesn't yet know you. And Father, we pray someday will. And we thank you for the privilege of being partners with the Holy Spirit in this great work. Continue, Father, to be at work, we pray, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.